All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to create the geometry node setup that you saw in the intro. Um, I was working on this scene and I really wanted a basket underneath the vanity here. Uh, and I found some videos on how to create baskets, how to model them. Uh, but I really wanted something procedural uh, with geometry nodes that I could modify as I went along. Uh, and I couldn't quite find what I was looking for. So I wanted to share what I came up with and see what people thought. If you have any suggestions, uh, feel free to leave a comment uh, down below. Um, but yeah, let's get started. So let's go ahead and open up Blender. Uh, we're going to leave the default cube and open up geometry nodes. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is create the basic shape of the basket. And the first thing we're going to do is add a Bezier segment. Let's put that right there. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so we can see what's going on. And the first thing that we're going to do is create the basic profile of the basket's edge. And the way we're going to do that, first we're going to put the start point to the origin. And then I'm going to go ahead and add Combine XYZ nodes for the start handle and duplicate that a couple of times for the end handle and end point. And let's see, so the start handle I'm going to put out at point one. Same with the end handle, sorry, point one, and the end point. And then I'm going to move the Z of the end point up, I think, and put that at point three. Now you can start to see this is the profile of the edge of the basket. Uh, but you can see this point is a little sharper than I want it to be. So I'm going to move the end handle up a little bit. I think actually point two looks pretty good. So we'll leave that there. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect all of these to the group input. And that's just so that A, we can control it from outside of the actual geometry node setup. And we won't have to come in here and edit things every time. But also so that multiple instances of this object uh, can have different settings for all these values. And bring out this. And what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to change all of these. So this is the start handle X and start handle Z. And handle X and handle Z and X and and Z. Yeah, so that allows us to go out here and I can control the height and some of the other controls from outside. And that is basically it for the edge profile. Now what we want to do is instance this edge, uh, this curve around a circle. So let's go ahead and add a curved circle. And then let's see what that looks like. So that is way bigger than I want it to be. So what I'm going to do is right away just connect this radius to the group input and actually I want to move this towards the top and I will change that radius down like 0.15 is about where I want it so let's go ahead and do instance on points and we will instance our Bezier segment along that curve and you can see all the Bezier segments are all in their original alignment. 
So what we want to do is rotate all of these, and we'll just do that with the line oiler, the vector. And for this vector, we're just going to put in a position node. And all that's doing is taking the all these instances. Um, this position is the position of the point on the curved circle that the instance is going to be on. And then we're just aligning to that vector. And that's pretty much it for the verticals. Now for the horizontal bands that are going to weave in and out of these verticals, we're just going to duplicate this instance on points. And instead of instancing the Bezier segment around the circle, we're going to instance the circle along the Bezier segment. So let's take that and connect it to the points. And then we'll take the circle to the instances. And let me add a see, join geometry node to make it easier to see what's going on. And we'll plug that in down there. So now we've got just two instances of that circle and we want quite a bit more. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to go down here and add a resample curve node. And now with this node, we can just control how many instances we actually want. And let me just connect this so that we use that there as well. Uh, now the next problem is all of these circles actually follow the original Bezier segment, which isn't what we want. We actually want all these circles to be right in the center. Um, basically, we want to zero out the X and Y. So I'm going to add a set position node here. And for the position, what we're going to do is we're just going to multiply the original position. So to this vector, we're just going to connect another position input. And we're going to leave the X and Y as zero, and we're going to add going to do one for the Z. So it's going to keep the original Z. Now we have all of those circles in the center, but they're still not scaled correctly. So we're going to fix that by changing the scale on the set instances, or the instance on points node here. So let's get another position input. And this is going to be the position of the points on the original Bezier segment. So we're going to take that. And if you remember, the original Bezier only actually changed in the X and Z coordinates. Um, all we need to know is the, the uh, position of the X coordinate of the original Bezier. So we're going to take this and separate the X, Y, Z coordinates and take the X coordinate and just add this original radius here. And then take that and divide again. Let's see if I can go point there. We're gonna divide again by that original radius. And this is just giving us uh, the size of the outside circle relative to that inner radius. And since we're just uh, scaling in two dimensions, we can just take that and plug it straight in. And that actually gives us the basic shape that we're looking for. And we'll be able to control all these points and make these circles weave in and up. Um, so yeah, let me Just take all of this and we will put it in a frame and rename this as frame shape. Okay, now that we've got the basic shape of our basket, the next step is going to be to actually create the woven appearance. Um, so making these circles alternate between moving in and out 
um, along the normal. So the way we're going to do that, we're just going to add a set position node to this line here, and that is the geometry of these horizontal bands that go around. And again, we want to alternate moving in and out um, along these lines. So let's add an index input and take that to a math modulo. And we're going to modulo two. And what that's going to do is so one modulo two is going to be one, two modulo two is going to be zero, three modulo two is going to be one again. And so basically, it's just going to alternate between zero and one. So let's take that to a map range node, because instead of alternating between zero and one, what I actually want is to alternate between negative one. And let's see what we got. So what this is doing, it's almost what we want, but it's actually alternating on the index of the instances of these circles. So let's fix that by adding a realize instances node. And that just looks like a mess. So let's add a math node in here and multiply. And let's just shrink this down very small so we can see what we're doing. So that's kind of what we're looking for, but we need to actually offset these based on the normal and not just one in X, Y, and Z. And the way we're going to find the normal, let me separate that for a second. What we're going to do is we're going to rotate the tangent of this, of the horizontal curves around the tangent of the vertical curves. So let's go ahead and get a curve tangent node in here. And we're going to transfer the value of that curve tangent. We're going to transfer that. And like I said, we're going to rotate that. So let's do vector rotate and use that as the axis. And let's just copy this curve tangent here and set that as the vector that we're rotating. And we're going to rotate it by 90 degrees. And let's take this to a scale. Make some more room. And we're going to use this as our scale and take that to the offset. I'm not sure. OK, so. Oh, well. Blender is nice enough to give us a warning here. So it's telling us that this geometry needs to contain a mesh, which. So these aren't even curves at this point. So what we actually need to do is add a realized instances node first. Now we can add a curve to mesh. And now that same error is actually saying that the source must contain or must have faces. Uh, and that's because we selected this nearest face interpolated. And since we don't actually have any faces, we just need to do nearest. And now we don't have any errors. But the reason it's still not doing what we want is because uh, mesh does not have a curved tangent. So what we need is to get this attribute from a curve. So we're going to capture attribute back here when it's a curve. I'm going to need to change this to be a vector. We're going to set that here and use that as 
the attribute that we transfer. So let me go ahead and you can see all of those offsets are now off of the normal of the outside perimeter of that basket, which is exactly what we want. Um, however, if you look from the top down, you can see that they're all aligned. So what we actually want is for alternate horizontal circles to be offset in the opposite direction. And what we're going to do to fix that is actually reuse these. So to our map range, it's ultimately between negative one and one. What we're going to do is add another capture attribute conveniently already selected. And take that value and multiply it by by the um, by the alternating value for the individual points. We need to change this to spline so it's actually capturing alternating circles, and that looks kind of incredible. But that's not what we want yet. So the reason it looks like that. Well, let's actually just take this and scale it down a little bit so we can see what's going on. I oh, know, I think that actually is what we want. Yes, that is exactly what we want. So now you can see different circles are alternating in different directions. And let me let's join up this from this realized instances over here um, so that we have the vertical curves in there as well. And now you can see these are right in the center of that, of those offsets. And just to make it a little bit clearer, let's go ahead and we'll add our curve to mesh over here and give it a profile curve do just a curved circle. And we will add that in as the profile curve. And that's just, that's just way too big. Uh, so I actually know like 0 0.003 is what I've used, which gives us a reasonable size. And so now you can see that woven pattern is already there. That actually was pretty good. So what I'm going to do is take all of this and then let's put this in another frame and let's label that. There we go. Okay, before we move on to the next section of this, um, I do want to point out one thing I forgot. When you add these curved circles and curve to mesh, uh, it's a good idea to reduce this resolution. And I've even gone down as far as six and it looks fine. Um, because in order to smooth this out, we're actually going to use some subdivision surface nodes or a subdivision surface node. Uh, and if you have this set to the default 32 and then subdivide it, you're gonna end up with a lot of geometry and it's probably gonna slow your computer down. Um, so if you notice things slowing down, check for those uh, that may be the culprit. And then I'm gonna go back to our initial, the main shape area and on this resample curve, I'm actually going to bump this up to 25 because it's going to make it a little easier to see what we're doing here. So the next thing I want to cover is this top edge. It looks kind of unfinished and I want something there that looks a little bit more polished. So in between these, I'm going to try and separate this top band. So let's use a separate geometry node. 
up here. And the way we're going to do the selection for this separation is we're going to try and find the highest index of these instances of horizontal bands. So let's get an index input. And we're going to take that to an attribute statistic uh, node here. And we want the maximum. And so we're going to do a compare equal. And wherever this index is equal to the maximum index, that is what we want to select. Now, obviously, that didn't do what we want. Um, we're going to use spline for both of these. And we also need to give this geometry to work with. And it's still not giving me what I'm looking for. So, um, this is going to be a common theme. So we're going to have to realize instances before we do that in order to get that um, to be actual splines rather than instances. So now you can see we've got all the rest of our horizontals and the top one is separated for us. Uh, so before we move on, I'm going to make sure that the rest of these are connected to our original geometry that way. Our original basket is still there, minus this top band. So let's go back and work with just that top horizontal piece. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put another curve, that kind of curve. We're going to do another curve to mesh on that top circle. But what we want is to have a, a bundle of, of uh, I guess it'd be reads or whatever, and twist it around this, this circle here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another curve circle. And we're going to give this a radius of 0 0.003, like the rest of our basket. Um, and then we're going to add another curve circle up here. Let's put this to know, 0.02. And we're going to then instance on point. And we're going to put a bunch of these circles onto this larger circle. Let's see what that looks like. Not quite right. So let's go ahead and figure out. So we want to make the number of circles, the number of instances around there dependent on basically the size of this other circle. But let's add in a resample curve here. And figure out how we're going to change this count to fit. So first of all, let's use a value input for the size of this smaller circle. And then we can take a spline length node here. And we can just divide that by the smaller circle to get our count. But that's twice as many because obviously that's the radius. Unfortunately, if we just divide by half, that's the same as multiplying by two. I'm actually going to change that and actually multiply by two just because that's the way that I think. 
So that looks a little too big. I'm going to change this down to 0.01. I think that's going to be better. 0.015. We can determine that later. So that is the profile that I actually want to take around this curve. So let's set that as the profile for that curve. Oh, it's giving me an error. What is this going to be? Instances of. So again, realize instances. And there you go. So that gives us a bunch of circles wrapped around that outer circle, but nothing is twisted. So let's try and address that with, we'll start with this set curve tilt. And you can see by adjusting that, that spins those that profile around, but we want it to change. We want it to twist differently. We want it to twist more as it goes around. So let's use a spline parameter. And this factor should do exactly what we want. So you can see what this spline parameter, what this factor is, is it goes from zero to one along the length of that curve. And then unfortunately it does this from one back to zero really quickly uh, between the last two points. Uh, so what we're gonna do, let's see if we, if we take this and multiply it. We can see as we go up, just twist more and more, that looks worse as we pass through pi, and then as we get to two pi, which is one full rotation. Now, this doesn't look so bad. And we also have one twist as it goes around. So I'm going to take this and do another multiply. And I'm going to multiply by, you can just type in tau here, which is two pi, which is one full rotation. Um, and multiplying that by 0.5 is going to be a problem. So we're going to do an integer input. And at 0, it's not twisted at all. But if we crank this up a little bit, and we go to 5, that actually looks exactly like what we want. All this jagged bumpiness will go away with the uh, subdivision surface. So that is actually what we want out of that. So let's go back down here. I'm going to put in a put in another join geometry node down here. And join up all of our original basket. And that actually looks pretty good. I'm going to make that smaller again because that bothers me just a little bit. Um, and again, you'll notice I left this at 32. So let's bring that down to six again. Yeah, so that looks pretty good. But I also think, so when we do the bottom of the basket, I'm just going to do like a square um, woven pattern for the bottom. And it's going to be hard to join that up. So I actually want another one of these bands around the bottom. And fortunately, we can do pretty much the same thing as we did before to get the top of the basket, or to get that top spline. Um, so we're going to duplicate this compare. And instead of taking the maximum index, we're just going to take the minimum index. And we're going to separate the geometry out from the rest of it. And again, I need to make sure that I link that back up to the rest. Now we have the rest of the basket 
minus the one band at the bottom. Um, and what we can do, let's go ahead and make this whole section a group by itself. And that way, we can actually take this and control this from the outside. And let's call this twist count. And we'll make this an integer. And I'm trying to think if I want to control anything else. I think I do change my mind about this already. So I might change my mind about this again. Let's call this bundle radius. And we'll call actually you know, the control point there and just go like that. Take care of that value and that value. And we'll call this strand radius. Let's go back up of this and reset our strand radius to 0 0.003 and then bring our twist count back up. I think we had five before. I think that looks good. So now let's just duplicate this and take our bottom curve up to there and then actually just do do a join geometry up here let's just join these two together up here there you go now we have the same twisted section at the top and bottom and I'm going to go ahead and rename this node group as twisted ring. Okay, the next step is going to be to add a bottom to our basket. And all we really need is a set of perpendicular lines because we're actually gonna just reuse everything in this um, weave section that we created earlier. So to get those perpendicular lines, let's go back to our group input and we're gonna take the radius and bring that down here. And let's just put that through a combine XYZ node. And I'm going to use that as the start point of a curve line. And I'm just going to go ahead, duplicate that combine XYZ, and put that in for the end point as well. And let's go ahead and create another control point there. And I need to multiply this by negative one and put that into the X of the endpoint. Straighten this up a bit. Now, what we have is basically the diameter, hopefully you can see that, the diameter of the circle. And in order to create a perpendicular line, let's just go ahead and we'll add a transform geometry node and all we need to do is rotate that by 90 degrees around the Z. And then the next thing we just need, um, basically the same thing we did up here. So we'll use a instance um, points and there we go. And then we'll duplicate that up here and just do the opposite. So this is now the instances and this is the points. 
and we'll put in a join geometry node over here just so we can see everything that's going on. Now, obviously we don't have enough points, uh, so let's add, we'll add a resample curve node back here and we can just take, if we hold control down, you can actually just move all of those noodles um, and reconnect that. Just leave it at 10 for now. So now we have all our perpendicular lines, but obviously no woven pattern yet. But fortunately, we did all this work up here. So let's take this whole section here, which is the weave that we created, and we'll do control G, which will turn that into a group. And I'm going to rename these inputs real quick um, and actually reorder them. So this will be the weave and we'll rename this to be the flat and tab back out. And then we can just take that node and duplicate it and we'll put it on that line down there and let's see take this into the flat and there you go basically for free we got that weave pattern in there and i'm actually going to go ahead let's just add the curve to mesh here and add another curved circle as our input input to the uh, profile curve and as a reminder just make sure you reduce the resolution down to something reasonable otherwise you're going to slow down your computer um, and we'll use 0 0.003 the same that we've been using everywhere else basically and you can see that weave pattern and if we go up here we can just join this into the rest of the geometry that we already have. And obviously leaving it square is not gonna work with all that extra geometry sticking out. So the way we're gonna take care of that, we're just gonna create a Boolean, basically a cutter out of the bottom ring of the basket. And we're gonna remove all the excess just by using a mesh Boolean. So let's move back here. We already have this, this separate geometry node, which takes care of getting the bottom ring of that basket. So let's take this selection here, we'll move it down, down here somewhere. And let's see, first thing I wanna do is we're just gonna do a transform geometry node, work above this line. And I'm just going to translate this by negative 0.5. That's probably more than you really need to do that. Um, and then because we're going to use a extrude mesh, which requires a mesh input, we're going to do, we're going to do curve to mesh uh, and then use that as the input to an extrude mesh and make sure we can see what we're doing. So that's not extruding anything, but it is translated down. So we're gonna switch this extrude mesh from extruding faces to extruding edges. And we're obviously gonna to need to control that. So for this offset, let's use a combine XYZ and just put in one as the Z coordinate. And then we just need to extrude these faces out. So let's duplicate this extrude mesh node, switch this back to faces, and uncheck this individual. Now, it's hard to tell, but that actually, it's doing something weird here. So I'm going to turn on face orientation so you can see what's going on. If we go back to this first extrude mesh node, you can see that it's actually inside out. This red means it's the back face of the, of the plane. 
So we're just going to add a flip faces node in here. And all that's going to do, obviously, is flip the faces. So then when we extrude the mesh, now it actually looks right. And the outside uh, faces are the outside normals. And in order to use this as a cutter, we actually need to have a complete mesh. So let's go ahead and add a join geometry node out here. And we're going to take not the flipped faces, but the original extrude mesh and put that into the join geometry. And now we have a complete shape, a complete geometry um, in order to use that for a Boolean operation on our uh, on our mesh, on our um, woven pattern. So let's add that uh, to mesh Boolean. And it actually defaults to difference, which is what we're going to use. So let's take our cutter to the mesh two of that difference. And just like that, we now have a nice round woven pattern for the bottom of our basket. So let's take that and actually is that already, yeah, that's already into the join geometry. I want to close that a little bit. It's the mesh pattern is just too big right now. Um, so I'm going to go back to this resample curve. Five, 15 should work. And I'm also noticing Oh, a couple of things. So first, I'm noticing that these lines are too jagged. Um, we'll address that in a minute. But first, notice that all of these are aligned with each other. This is also a problem with um, with the main part of the basket. If you have an odd number of uh, cross sections, uh, it's not going to weave correctly. So if you just change this, change it to 16, and now it's back to being a nice woven pattern. Uh, so that's problem one. And I think our subdivision surface is in the wrong spot. Because if you look, oh, yeah, a couple of things. So the rim looks a little jagged, but these are definitely pretty jagged down here at the bottom. So the reason for that is because we have our subdivision surface before the join geometry. So I'm just going to hold down Alt and I can move that to the other side of that join geometry. And that will smooth out the rim and will also smooth out the points at the bottom of the basket there. So that is pretty much it for modeling that geometry. Let's go ahead. I'm going to turn off face orientation. And I also think I can clean up some of this, but otherwise, that is it for modeling this basket. Well, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Uh, this actually turned out to be a lot longer than I expected, so I'm going to post another video really soon showing how I unwrapped and textured the basket. Um, also, I've been working on a node setup to make rectangular baskets, which sounds like it should be easy, but it's been a lot more challenging than I, than I expected. Um, so yeah, this is actually the first tutorial I've done like this, so if you have any suggestions or content you'd like to see, leave a comment down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.